So today we're talking about sourcing turbo. And there's a reason why we're doing that. It's mainly because we find recruiters spend way too much time sourcing. And that also costs money, wastes time and prevents the thing that most people actually want to do, which is either sleep, eat, party or sell, or maybe all of those things all at the same time. Who knows? God forbid. So we're going to go through at breakneck speed, as is always the case. Um, it's Wayne and I on, on the webinar today. I'm simply here to warm you up for him. And then he's going to share his ideas because he does most of the work with our automation clients. I'm just in the background with the glitter, she says. So I'll introduce you to Wayne in a second. Remember, we do three things. We're a training company by, by trade, but we have a crazy amount of tech knowledge. And we love helping clients get to what we call bullhorn first, rather than everything everywhere all at once. So that's something to think about. But automation is a big passion of ours. And if I had one bit of tech, a time machine, I'd go back in time the 25 years that Wayne and I have worked together and automate everyone I've ever met to give them a better work-life balance and more resilience in times of strife. And I'll let you decide what a time of strife has been in the last 25 years, because I've certainly got um, more, more strife scenarios and I have fingers from the last 25 years we're obviously here as well to sell ourselves and one of the things that we do extremely well is training and our hit platform is designed to do just that whether you're experienced or new to recruitment we get some fantastic feedback on our bullhorn training teams LinkedIn recruitment training a lot of recruitment training sales training and we're building out new content every week we'd love to see you trialing it and if you're an existing client well done well done for buying the platform we like you for that. But what I also want to know, and this is really important, is what is your typical recruiter's strategy for sourcing? What do they actually do? And, and this is quite a, something that's a big passion of mine because I'm going to share some data with you in a second around norms and averages and all those horrible words to describe the thing that would rather not be. But what's the, what's the primary sourcing strategy within your recruitment business right now? Is it Oh, what can I remember? And certainly when Wayne and I first met back in 2000, that was that was the sourcing strategy. But to be frank, it freaking worked because we had less data to play with. And also we had more intensive relationships with our clients. That sounds rude, but we did. And definitely with our candidates, we knew what kind of dog they had and how many kids they had and stuff. But for some of you who've been in the market for a while, you'll you'll know what that was like. So you had much less data. Do you have a bullhorn first sourcing approach? Like literally, you will look at it while you're while you're taking the client brief and you 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 will regularly not need to look anywhere else. That's the goal, isn't it, really? Why buy bullhorn if the only person making money from your purchase is the person you bought it from? Yeah? You want to make money from your own systems. Do you have an adverts first approach? Get the advert out. Tell everyone that you don't have candidates. That's what an advert is. In my humble opinion, she says, I'm very hard to please. Or do you have a LinkedIn straight job board first approach? Great for LinkedIn, even better for job boards. They love it when you've got that strategy. They love it. Brilliant. Or do you like just everything everywhere all at once? Fear of missing out. Let's just see what we can get. Let's tell our candidates that if they come onto our database, we'll forget about them and hope that they apply again. Again, sarcasm alert. So talking of thinking, oh, what a segue. I didn't even realise that was going to happen. I've found some stats uh, to warm you up. And to get you thinking and to give you ammunition or to give you a kick up the bum or to give you confidence that you're perfect. Who knows? But in many instances, your CRM system, in, in your case, Bullhorn, is not first. It's one of many. And that hurts when you've got lots of systems and it hurts when you've got lots of recruiters who are not potentially as effective or as efficient as you'd like them to be. It hurts when you have to advertise jobs and give your money away to LinkedIn and job boards, in spite of the fact that on your website it says your niche or niche, if the Americans are listening, because I can speak two languages. So if your CRM isn't first, uh, we hear this date, this stat a lot. And we've, we've been given this stat by Daxtra, but we actually have spoken to our own clients. And sometimes it's worse when we start working with them, obviously, not afterwards. Quickly get that in there. So. This is not a good start. You couldn't put that on your sister, on your on your website saying, come to us, give us a job. We'll spend ages looking outside. And then when we go to put the candidate, oh, they were there all along. And I'm sure that if Dorothy was here with her ruby slippers, she'd give you a good talking to as well. Um, and sometimes people say, what are you talking about? And then I go, God, I'm getting old. But some, some of you know who I'm talking about. We don't want any time wasted. None of us need time wasted. 
Uh, if Bullhorn came up with a time machine, you'd buy it, but they haven't, unfortunately. So the next best option is automation. OK, so we need to waste less time because if we place from our own CRM, we place quicker. And also, if we place quicker, a load of other chain reactions happen, like we probably get more sleep or our candidates think we really do give a damn and we know what we're doing or our clients go, damn it, you're good and stuff like that, as well as less invoices paid to outside authorities when actually we had it all along, yeah? We spend too much time sourcing, which means we're not spending time doing the rest of our workflow, which for me is upsetting because if you're on this webinar now, you're here to learn some ideas and get some um, insight as to what you can do to help people source. But I must stress, even if you have no sources in your business, but they are having to regularly look for data and things like that, they are then not spending time screening, not spending time uh, preventing counter offers. They are certainly not spending time preventing dropouts. They are certainly not securing the placement. They are certainly not getting referrals and are managing their accounts because they're sourcing. And that for me is upsetting on many levels, because certainly if you're a 360 recruiter, you have to be amazing at everything. And that's a big ask in the current market. So I want you to really be thinking about while you're while you're listening to Wayne is if you could uh, place more candidates or you weren't wasting time, what would you actually do with that time? And, and I know what I would be doing. Add more time. Um, equally, we know as well that if we spend too much time sourcing, uh, we actually lose more applicants and candidates than we gain, which is a bit silly when we consider that we're looking for stuff. But while we're looking, we're losing, we're losing constantly. And that's not great for a market that purports to be about humans and looking after people. Uh, so when you don't manage a candidate database, you know this already. I'm just giving you some stats to confirm that what you already know. They, you know, your candidates just decide to do their own thing. They'll do their own thing. Uh, the really good ones blink and they're gone. So you need time on your side to be grabbing hold of these people and monetizing them. You equally need to make sure that you have got time in your, your day. Automation helps, humans help even more to keep those candidates engaged because they literally will be dropping out of your system. There's another bit of stat, uh, another bit of data out there that says on average, the average database de uh, deteriorates, um, decays is a better word, by about 25% a year. Uh, no excuses. You've got automation that should not be happening to you, lovely people. Uh, but why does it decay? Because people change the details. They fall in love with other recruitment businesses. All sorts of terrible tragedies. So we don't want that to happen. And equally as well, candidates tell us that they just want you to talk to them. And they almost don't care if it's a robot, if it's a human to a degree, as long as they just know what's going on. That's enough. That's enough. Their expectations are relatively low. So if you could keep your candidates warm, how much easier would that make your recruitment business? I'll ask, I'll let you answer that in your own time. But again, and this is a really like a nice, bold statement. But if you didn't need to rely so much on LinkedIn and job boards, what would that actually mean? Time saved, money saved, better mental health, uh, probably spending more money on your staff to keep them and more training time, hint, hint, uh, to make them better at their jobs. Also weaponizing them against AI, because if what we can do is automate whatever we can to help a recruiter become amazing people, 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 persons, then that's great. Buying more tech doesn't solve anyone's problems, it, apart from the people that you buy it from. Using it and training your, st your staff to be amazing consultants, that's what automation is all about. Because actually, ironically, the more you, you spend loads of money advertising, yeah, but 50% of the people that come through your door are not worth your time. That seems to me like a bit of a crap stat for, for your money. Not good, not good. I'd probably so suggest again, that's what, even higher now, Lisa. Is it? Well, I'd, I'd love, I love a stat. Check it out, me. So again, I want you to be thinking while Wayne's talking to you about this because I'm, I'm, I'm almost done warming up. Don't worry, we're getting there. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like the advert in between the Super Bowl, or maybe actually no, because sometimes that that bit's a bit better, isn't it? I don't think that much of myself. So I want you to be thinking, and I want you to be pushing, pushing your own buttons here. Is if you could really, really nail your sourcing, if you could nail your automations, what would that do for you? Evidently, we do suggest you target your time and attention on the data right in front of you and you get it working. Yeah, work it, baby. You equally have goals to reduce your spend and time because even free costs money. Yeah, it costs time. Yeah. You reduce your reliance on external systems and ultimately speed that sourcing up. You know, that fear of missing out that recruiters seem to have developed as a 
weird pathogen in recent years because there's data out there. I better not miss any of it. It's costing us time and money and reputation within the industry. So I'm all about automation to hygienically clean up and keep warm. And I'm evidently personally in for, in for training recruiters to get that consultant piece back out because that's important. We have a webinar in two days for your teams, maybe you as well, if you want to come become really good at sourcing. We've got some tips on how to really weaponize your sourcing techniques within within Bullhorn. I'll send you this outside of this webinar, but um, it's on, on Friday, nearly said Thursday, Friday. Um, and even if you can't make it register because it, it makes us feel nice. Um, and we'll also send you a link to the webinar once it's been recorded and popped up onto our website as well. Evidently, though, there's more tips on the recruitment here. Loads more tips. The webinar is just designed to make you think, wow, what am I missing? She says. This is my dig up stupid model. Some of you who've worked with me before will have seen this. This is just comes from um, uh, an episode of The Simpsons that I watched one day. Call me one day. We'll talk about it. But ultimately, this is your database. Don't get stuck in the in the black stuff. Don't get stuck down there. There's no point. Yeah. And equally, that yellow stuff, that amber stuff. Mm, no, bit dirty, bit out of date. Get your marketing team or your automation um, admins to fix that. Get it into the green zone. Source from your own space. If you're constantly looking outside, you'll miss what's right under your nose. Yeah. And actually, if you're constantly looking on the outside, uh, active candidates, active, 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 they're active with lots of recruiters, not massively helpful to you. Work in the green zone. Yeah. Dig up, stupid. Get out of the black, get into the green and try and stay there. Obviously, maybe occasionally go out into that red zone outside, appetise, LinkedIn. Absolutely. Don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but definitely go on the outside when you need to. But don't make that your first thing. Yeah. Don't don't admit to your clients that you don't have a hold on your market. Get inside your system. Use it. Even if you start today, imagine what you could have achieved in the next three to four months. Goes goes quick. Yeah. Valentine's Day. I'm hoping I've done enough. Yeah. No one's actually exited yet. So let's get cracking, Wayne. Dazzle us you. with your sourcing automations. So sourcing is a really interesting area. This time last year, it was all about sourcing. Obviously, the market's changed a little bit. Um, but with sourcing, well, why do people not source from Bullhorn essentially? Well, sourcing from Bullhorn requires you to have great candidate management. So good sourcing starts with great candidate management. Next slide, please, Lise. Um, a bit like Spider-Man, great power comes great responsibility. So um, if you don't have a good candidate management strategy in your Bullhorn system, if you're not managing the data as it comes in the, through the door or you're keeping it refreshed, et cetera, et cetera, then you're going to have a big database that nobody engages with. And therefore, um, the CRM system is rubbish, essentially. Uh, but invariably, it's not rubbish. It's just the candidate data on there potentially is not up to spec. Um, Art Papas, uh, a Bullhorn Engaged last year, a founder of Bullhorn, uh, quoted something that I've been saying for donkey's years, which is the concept or the perception of a CRM system needs to change. And it needs to change from a management and leadership perspective, I think, not just from a recruiter perspective. But the idea of a CRM system, it's a customer relationship management system. The whole point of a CRM system is that you're inputting the relationship information, you're keeping it up to date, you're able to refer back to it, you're able to remind yourself who you need to go and speak to, et cetera, et cetera. Too many times people just see a CRM system as a big filing cabinet with loads of files in it, and they'll dip into it as and when they see fit. To make CRM a long term success, you really need to change the dynamic and start thinking about communities. So start thinking about those groups of candidates that you're always looking for. Start thinking about specialization within, within your teams. Is there a particular team or an individual that has a great candidate set that we can try and keep that warm and engaged throughout automation? So look at communities and look at the communities that are stored within your CRM system. I think that's a really, really important thing that management really need to get their head around. Um, some things that you can do with great candidate management. Well, the idea of it is that you want to keep your data up to date. It needs to be relevant. And ideally, you want to keep it engaged. If you fulfill those three areas, then sourcing naturally falls back to the CRM system. It's easier to manage and find the candidate in a community of people that's highly engaged, not going external and trying to have code conversations with people. So automation should help you continuously keep the candidate data refreshed. Um, I was speaking to a client yesterday um, doing a, an account management call, and he said, it's brilliant. What we've done is we now just focus on the top 5% of engaged candidates. We've got 200,000 candidates, but it's the 10,000 candidates that we go to first. 
their sales and their their um, time to place candidates has significantly reduced. Uh, you want to identify and record candidates' wants and needs. We all do it every time we speak to a, a Vodafone or the utilities companies on the phone that the person or the agent will say, whilst I've got you, can I just check the following information? Too many times I don't hear recruiters saying that. Every time you speak to a candidate, every time you speak to a sales contact, just re refresh and re-record the information about what it is they're looking for and get that information to bullhorn. That will help sourcing much simpler. And ultimately, you want to keep them warm, you want to keep them engaged, and hopefully you want to try and keep them as loyal as possible. Um, those of you who've been on uh, uh, the um, uh, the previous webinars, I think that you need to use the status field to manage and identify and map the relationships that you have uh, with your sales contacts. And this is a very similar designed one. Um, this is one for, for candidates. And again, if you can think about the stages of the relationship you have with candidates, map them out, then naturally you can start building out automations that will help promote and move the candidate from a prospect all the way through to hopefully a placed record. So again, if you haven't got statuses or your statuses are a little bit muddled, one of your homework, one of your action points should be go away and just review those statuses. Does everyone understand what they're there for? Okay. Uh, Bullhorn candidate management. Um, uh, I'm a big believer in minimum data standards. I'm not a massive believer in having hundreds of mandatory fields. Again, if you're able to identify the relationship that you have through the status, then you can start thinking about data standards. So potentially when a new candidate gets added to the database, you've not spoken to them. So why would you know um, various different bits and pieces about their, uh, their lifestyle or what it is they're looking for? But if you're using mandatory fields, that prohibits people wanting to put those candidates on the database. So look at um, mandatory fields. Uh, but try and minimise them. And then you can use automation to try and help identify additional bits of information that you want. So, for example, when you've screened or interviewed a candidate, you should know a lot more about them. When you've placed a candidate, you should know even more about what it is they love doing, what their favourite football team is or what their favourite sport is, et cetera, et cetera. You can use automation to remind the recruiters to go and capture that information. And ultimately, we want self-service. We want candidates to be able to update their own data. Back in the early noughties, that was just never an option. Now candidates are used to updating um, their data through self-service, through LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. So you've now got the ability to be able to do that through automation as well. So looking at the five automations, I think you all need. These are not necessarily focused around sourcing, some of them are, but some of these are actually the start of the journey about how you can help improve the sourcing process. And one of those is a really good welcome and an application journey. Two journeys, one for new candidates that have been added to the database and one that's basically managing the applicant journey as well. Um, the great idea behind this is that it's an introduction to your brand, the culture, the support you're going to give those people. It's a great opportunity to ask for information back from the candidate and do some self-service. Um, and it captures, it speeds up the capturing of that data and it removes the admin work that your recruiters don't want to have to do from them. So it's a great benefit. Welcome application. Mentioned the success story there of the top 5% of candidates on the database. That's all they focus in on and they're making huge money benefit from that. Um, the other thing as well is it improves data accuracy. So uh, one client went from 15% accuracy when we analyzed their data. After about six months, that improvement had been 60%. Lots of other automations that we put in there as well. But the main emphasis was that initial journey that we had. Now, one of the biggest considerations I think that we just need to talk about very briefly here is who sends that welcome journey? Who sends that welcome email? Um, uh, it's a mixture of what's got to come from the recruiter. I like the idea of it also coming from the CEO or even just from the business. It's a branding exercise. Here is our way of managing you. This is what we're going to do to help you, et cetera, et cetera, Mr. Candidate. So I, I don't see any problems with basically the CEO of the business sending that as opposed to just the recruiter. OK, next one. Uh, update candidate status. Um, initially, uh, many moons ago, this was the main reason why people wanted to buy it. Candidate status was not being uh, updated. So you'd have lots of candidates who were placed, uh, but their status was still prospects. 
um, or they may be going through a process and again, they'd still be available. Um, lots of reasons where how you can get automation to automatically update the status of the candidate. So for example, uh, if you've interviewed the candidate, it's a classic one, immediately, as soon as the notes type of screen candidate or interview happened that can trigger off a status update to say that we've now uh, the candidate has moved from prospect or new lead to available or live or registered or whatever you want to call it and um, lots of ways in which you can move uh, uh, the candidate status up and down automatically because in my experience recruits just don't update that field as often as they should do okay uh, request updated cv this is a really good one um, recruiters love going to job boards because they can see and they can source and they can search against when was the last updated CV updated or, or, or received by those job boards. Um, it's a way of showing who's active in the market. So one of the things that you can be doing here is, yes, you can be requesting CVs. You can even do it on a time. 12 months every two years, however you want to sort of request that CV. You can even allow the recruiter to manually trigger that request of a CV. So do it through a notes type, request updated CV that can trigger off an email to the candidate requesting they update their CV. Um, the great thing about this, this, this journey specifically is that you can also record when that was received and you can update either a field or add a note type so that next time you can say, ah, right, okay, it's been one year, two years, three years, um, we need to go and notify that candidate and ask them to receive these. Another thing that you must do as well is you mustn't go and reach everyone in the database all at once. Again, everything everywhere all at once. We want to make sure that you do it in a, in a, a way that you can manage the response. So test it first maybe a thousand records, maybe 2000 records, see what responses you get, and then you can extrapolate that up over the course of the year, potentially. Uh, my One of my most favorite automations, and this is a real sourcing journey, is the advertised jobs process through, through Bullhorn Automation. Um, too often do we see, get the job on, and then go off and do lots of different things. Um, the issue that you have with sourcing from uh, externally or sourcing from the database, maybe 80% of that database is probably not looking. On average, 75 to 20% of your database is active at any one time. Yet your recruiters still try and reach everybody. So the advertised job process through automation allows you to shortlist candidates against a job, do an outreach campaign, which they can run over two, three, four, five days, depending on whether or not they engage uh, with the, the emails or not. And then those people that come back and say, yes, I'm interested in a call, well, they're the ones that your recruiters really want to be speaking to, not the other 80% of the people that are never going to pick up the phone potentially. So it really speeds up the advertising uh, of jobs and speaking to candidates process. And again, it can be layered. You can do it in day one for 20 people, day two, you can do it for another 20 people, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really quick way of engaging the database, getting good positive res results, uh, and then also educating your candidates that we're sending you jobs by email, but we're selecting you from that journey. So it's a really good way of um, showing candidates that you understand what they're looking for and you're only sending them relevant opportunities. Love that journey. The clients that implement this really love it as well. And finally, if you have Bullhorn Automation Enterprise level, um, you can utilize the semantic match feature. Um, there is a uh, an additional step under the job, which basically says auto match. It will automatically match candidates against a job that you upload. Now, this works pretty well. It really depends on the quality of your data. Um, so your data is key. You must have job titles. Again, categories, skills, industry, specialities, and either a zip code or postcode, a city or state or a country. It's a really good way if you work in a niche market, doctors, nurses, locums, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe just job developers or SAP people, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really good way of you being able to upload a job. The system within minutes, in theory, will go away and then source those candidates using its matching algorithm. And then what you want to do is you want to shortlist those candidates against that job message the recruiter say match these candidates and immediately you've got the ability to sort of start going through those and identifying which ones you want to speak to for clients that have really good data and once they've used the auto match feature for a long period of time what they then tend to do is switch on this and make this work with the advertised job process so the the ultimate process would be i add my job 
let's say within 15 minutes, the system has searched candidates, shortlisted them against the job. It's done an outreach campaign to those people and said, uh, I've got a job, are you interested? And you've got candidates either calling you or messaging you back saying, I'm interested in the job. Now that is a, an ultimate utopia. And I think that's where recruitment in general is moving towards. Um, that will make your recruiters a lot more productive. It will certainly um, standardize the processes in which you basically need to sort of uh, train your recruiters up on. So Ultimatch, brilliant feature. Um, uh, you, you do need Bullhorn Automation Enterprise Edition to be able to utilize that. Oof, that was quick. So for obvious reasons, we never have time to do questions on the on the <laughs> webinar. And we also know that you like to fly away really quickly. So you've got access. Drop us a line if you want to set up a call with Wayne and tease more information out of him. Be my guest. Some of you are already working with him anyway. Again, just all questions are good. Better out than in. Obviously, consider as well that automation is one thing. Getting your recruiters who are the humans to be excellent is another. And they are very interconnected. Yeah. Don't automate your business at the expense of your recruiters. You're, th you're there to free them up so that they can do all of the things that you're regularly bashing your head on a desk about. So that's something to think about as well. Remember, we've got this webinar this Friday and we have them every month. And we've had previous ones about BD, LinkedIn, Bullhorn, all that lovely stuff. I'll send them to you outside of this webinar. Obviously, we want to get as many recruiters onto recruitment here as possible. So we do offer free trials. I'm going to be nagging you about this. Automate what you can. Train on the good stuff. That's our mantra. So Wayne, quickly go through what needs to happen now from a next steps perspective. Um, if you're wanting to implement a good sourcing strategy, I, I, I would suggest that you first and foremost look at your statuses, make sure you understand what they are and educate your businesses to what those are used for. You can then start automating against those. I would also agree on minimum data standards against those statuses. Again, that will help you automate and validate your data correctly. Uh, you should map out your journeys as best as you can for new, uh, welcome and application journeys. Um, access how you source, uh, where do you go for first and whether or not you need to retrain and re-educate your business as to these are better ways of doing what we want you to do. Uh, you can then build your automations. You can then educate and train your recruiters on those new processes. And obviously, if you need any help or support, give us a call. Absolutely, for obvious reasons. That's it, everybody. We will be wow. um, obviously popping this on the on the blog, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to be seeing you re-watching it because you will have missed some bits or you might just want to watch it for a laugh. Who knows, bottle of wine, two bottles of wine. Have a great week, everyone. I hope to see you and your lovely team on our Bullhorn Tips sourcing webinar this Friday. Have a good, have a good November. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.